Welcome back. I have this little portable tripod thing that has adjustable legs that grab stuff. And I grabbed it into a Moringa tree branch. So this entire video is being shot by a Moringa tree holding my camera. Which is why it's swaying up and down. It's kind of got that seasick effect. And I, I like that. So, our refrigerator broke a few days ago and all the meat and everything that was in it, the mayonnaise, the coleslaw, spoiled, gone, ruined. The repairman hasn't come yet, but eventually we'll be here. But it doesn't matter now because everything's spoiled. So, we've been trying to live without a refrigerator. Now, 100 years ago, this would have been really easy. And I was thinking about it quite a bit. Um, and what did people do before they had refrigeration? You know, you had an ice box for a while, right? That was more primitive refrigeration. You had a box, you put a big chunk of ice in the back of it, and you kept, you know, spoilable things for a good period of time until that ice melted, and you get another piece of ice and you put it in. You had an ice box with insulation. Well, that's kind of cool. That would work, but we don't have the infrastructure for ice blocks and that sort of thing anymore. And I don't have a car to go down the road and buy a big bag of ice and stick it in the freezer. So, that's out. Sauerkraut, traditional pickles, kimchi, you know, these sort of things where you actually encourage specific bacteria to take over and live in your food and in turn they defend it from other bacteria that might be harmful. So they keep it from putrefying because they've fermented it and you're not going to get poisoned that way. So yogurt, you know, cheese, a lot of these things were traditional methods of dealing with a lack of refrigeration and they end up being delicious. Another method for living without refrigeration is drying food. If you can dry your food, you can dry jerky, you can salt fish and dry it, you can dry fruits and vegetables. I tried drying some peas and they were sort of weird. I tried drying uh, strawberries and I kind of dried them too much and they ended up sort of burned and crunchy. But if you do it right, dried foods can actually be delicious. The best thing I ever made personally with dried food was dried mango slices. Those were like eating candy and before you knew it, you'd eaten something like 25 mangoes. Awesome, but man, that's a lot of mango. So drying food for preservation is another way you can get past, you know, not having refrigeration. You can also can food. You know, that means you've got your boiling water bath or a pressure canner, you pack them in mason jars and they have those nice lids that lock down. A little known secret is that you can do the same thing with old salsa jars and any jars that have that little rubber bung on the inside. If they lock tight, they're safe. Now, don't sue me if you die of botulism, but, no, I mean, seriously, how could it not work? If it seals tight and the air is not coming into it, people say, oh, don't reuse those old salsa jars. Well, why not? If it's airtight, it's airtight. If a seal breaks, don't use it. But if that little button goes doink down on the top, you're fine. I put salsas and stuff, I've made my own salsas and put them back into salsa jars that I bought commercial salsa from, so canned food. Another thing is to just, you know, eat your food fresh. I got a whole bunch of green bananas from the homestead yesterday. My wife and I just wandered up and down the hillside and we cut stalks of bananas and plantains and we brought back so many. And those take home boil them, make soup out of them, um, you can mash them, put some butter and salt on them, they're good. They're basically like a potato or something. It's very strange, but uh, it's, it's pretty much a total starch food and can be used as a staple. So another thing we did was we cut a bunch of coconuts, cut the coconuts open, ate the, you know, drink the juice, and then ate the coconuts. Um, there are yams that were dug up. A friend of ours dug yams across the street and brought them down. We got a pumpkin that was given to us that we're gonna cut in half and roast. And then there's fresh fruit here and there that we can help ourselves to. Passion fruit is all over the place right now, so we've been eating passion fruit. We can eat salads from the greens around the yard, and we can eat eggs fresh from the chickens now that we know where the chickens are laying. So fresh food is another alternative. The biggest problem with not having the refrigeration is trying to keep leftovers and that sort of stuff good. I made some yam soup a few days ago, 
and because I knew it couldn't be refrigerated, I made extra, but then heated it up hot, let it come to a boil, let it cool off. Four hours later, heat it up so it's at boiling temperature again, so in case any bacteria have gotten into it. And I could kind of continuously did this, you know, go to bed, wake up in the morning, turn it on, make sure it comes to boiling. So it's like yam soup in the pot, nine days old, that kind of thing. Actually, we only did it for like two days, but it, you know, nobody died. We didn't get poisoned. We all feel great. And it's probably probiotic if you eat it without heating it up, maybe in a bad way. But keeping meat is sort of a problem unless you salt it. We had ground beef in the fridge. That's all ruined. So, you know, if I had really thought about it, if I knew that the refrigerator was failing, I could have packed that in with some salt, dried it in the oven, and had basically pressed ground beef jerky, that sort of a thing. But we didn't get to it. There are a few ideas on living without refrigeration since we're currently living without refrigeration, but I gotta say, I like having a fridge and I look forward to having it back. And I look forward to having you join me again next time. So thanks for watching. If you enjoy my videos, hit the thumbs up. And I will see you next time, or you can find me on the web at thesurvivalgardener.com. And until then, may your thumbs always be green.